Chers auditeurs, Dear listeners, bonjour. Welcome in Comdarchi Podcast Season 4. Saison 4 dans le monde fascinant des architectes. And in the architectural projects. Je suis Anne Charlotte de Ponte, passionnée d'architecture et docteur des universités en histoire de l'archi. I am one of the spokespersons of Anne Charlotte, who is a PhD in architecture history. Merci. Thank you. D'être avec moi aujourd'hui. To be with us today. Et and maintenant, now, lundi en français, place au talent. And Wednesday, let's talk projects. In English, of course. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, hello and welcome in this Comme d'Archi Summer Series, Season 4, Episode 87, written by Anne Charlotte. This is a stir for Anne Charlotte. To finish on a high note, Let's continue our journey in Normandy and stop off at the Château de Balleroy. A magical place because it has been almost entirely preserved and has remained there as if suspended in the midst of the turpitudes of history. Let's pray it lasts. From 1626 to 1636, François Mansart, the architect of the Château de Maison, built the Château de Balleroy for Monsieur de Choisy. This was shortly before the construction of the Château de Maison, which began in 1634. Here, there are no traces of ancient constructions, no primitive keep, no feudal fortress. Inheriting a wine business from his father during the time of Henri IV's court, and himself a wine merchant at the king's court, Jean de Choisy, who later became Secretary of Finance, inherited the Balleroy estate in the early 17th century. The domain is located between Bayeux and Saint-Lô. He decided to build a castle there and commissioned the young architect François Mansart to draw up the plans. Jean de Choisy was not content with building a splendid residence. Encouraged by Mansart's talents, he also wanted to attract a larger population to the area. Thus, the plan of the village is drawn, with wide, aligned streets allowing glimpses of the pleasure and diversity of the landscapes on all sides. In addition, the man who listens to the needs of the people proposes remedies for their suffering. He worked to increase their physical and moral well-being. He went to London in search of methods to improve the exploitation of iron resources and brought back the potato which he fed during the winter of 1652 to some of his town's poor. The Irish had been growing them for a long time, so why not the French? A visionary, he also quickly understood the benefits to the region of developing and perfecting apple growing. And don't we owe much of Normandy's character to him? The castle is one of architect François Mansard's earliest works, a synthesis of French traditions with a central dwelling framed by pavilions and rules of proportion inspired by the Italian Renaissance. Its famous staircase, whose straight flights are supported by arches, rests on the peripheral walls and contributes greatly to the building's renown. The staircase is featured in every scientific work devoted to the subject and the period. We'll come back to this later. While we are on the subject of the interior, It's worth noting that one of Balleroy's salons was partly decorated by Mignard, who painted the ceiling of the Grand Salon in 1670. Let's return to the exterior. As part of the castle's integration into the village, a large terrace was built in front of it, allowing visitors to admire the view from the main street. Bounded on either side by a single-story outbuilding, The entrance courtyard, decorated with two embroidery-like parterres, is enclosed by a wrought iron gate behind the moat. The long avenue leads to the castle. The French-style gardens, with their boxwood parterres designed by Le Nôtre, are gradually taking shape. The main building features a central three-story square pavilion. The pavilion is flanked by two identical wings with two square stories and a dormer roof. The ensemble is surrounded by a moat. The castle is built in local reddish schist, in the style of, but less expensive than, traditional brick. Chains of corn stone stand out against the schist. 
It is topped with high slate roofs. The first Marquis de Balleroy, Jacques de la Cour, acquired the castle in 1760. The building remained in the family for over two and a half centuries, undoubtedly ensuring its perfect state of preservation, despite the episode of the revolution when it was temporarily confiscated. It was classified as a historic monument by decree on January 18, 1951. In 1970, Malcolm Forbes, an American art lover and editor of one of America's leading financial magazines, Forbes magazine, acquired the Château de Balleroy. He was passionate about hot air ballooning and set up an aerostation museum there. The Château de Balleroy would not be what it is today if it hadn't seduced Malcolm Forbes, who fell in love with Normandy in 1944 after landing on Omaha Beach. Until his death in 1990, Malcolm Forbes organized every summer the International Balloon Festival on the castle grounds. In August 2019, almost 30 years after his father's death, Christopher Forbes sold the building and its furnishings to his friend, American entrepreneur Roy Edelman, who died in June 2022. Roy Edelman had set up a company to acquire the building. This became a foundation. The castle will continue to exist after his death. It will not be sold, emphasized the press. Work will continue and no project will come to a standstill. Annabelle cardron Batta, the castle steward, explains, it's very important for the Americans to continue to honor his memory. For Roy Edelman, although he was only master of the castle for a short time, was renowned for being discreet, inquisitive, generous, as was he, and visionary. But what about the famous Balleroy staircase? It's a two-story suspended staircase. Its flights on left-hand vaults are close to the so-called pendant type. They are curved along both the width and length of the flight. Digression. Do you know what a cul de four is in architecture? A cul de four is a half dome shaped vault, a quarter sphere, reminiscent of a bread oven. Cul de four were used from antiquity until the end of the Romanesque period to cover apses. The cul de four disappeared with Gothic architecture, only to reappear with the Renaissance. The half arch vault is still divided, i.e., an eighth of a sphere. Back to our subject. We cross the Balleroy staircase. Return resting on a half cul de four. Landing on a half arch finished at each end with a half cul de four. The return of the first resting is supported by a column. Architects Alan Braham and Peter Smith, in their 1973 book François Mansart, published in London, thought that this column was a repentance on the part of François Mansart who had observed deformations during construction. However, historian Jean-Marie Pérouse de Monclos tells us in L'Architecture à la Française, published by Picard in 2001, and I quote, Under all the other suspended returns, there is a stone tile quite similar to the column's abascus. This gives us the impression that Mansart foresaw, when cutting the stones, that the staircase would be supported and that he only decided to suspend it during the course of the work. Unless, as a last hypothesis, which we believe to be the correct one, Mansart wished to mark the audacity of his decision by a false repentance. The first column would only be there to make the absence of the following columns obvious. End of quote. The architecture of Balleroy, as Perros de Monclos also points out, bears some of the hallmarks of the nascent genius that François Mansart was to become. I quote, As in Mansart's best works, the Mass's Pyramid, the roofs are clipped and topped with lanterns. Like Lescaut and Delorme, Mansart practices the rhetoric of ellipses and understatement. The courtyard is lined with terraces, the ground level of which is reminiscent of the wings of old castles. Mansart's style is as bold as that of a medieval mason, a lover of hanging keystones. 
but he does so using all the resources of modern stereotomy. End of quote. As a reminder, stereotomy is the art of stone cutting, and at the time, mathematicians brought with the oblique section of conics, a section that produces an ellipse. Now commonly referred to as the Louis XIII monument, Balleroy is an example of innovative urban planning that directly inspired Louis XIV's Versailles, of which François Mansart's grand-nephew, Jules Ardois Mansart, was one of the principal architects. The 160-hectare estate features alternating French gardens inspired by Le Nôtre and an English park laid out in the 19th century in the Romantic style in vogue at the time. Fortunately, there are enthusiasts and patrons of the arts to support creation. What do you think? Dear listeners, see you next week for the opening of Season 5 of Comme d'Archi and for a great agency interview. Until then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. Thanks to Julien Robourg, sound engineer, who is collaborating with us today. Don't forget to tune in to our previews on Instagram at Comme d'Archie Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, don't hesitate to promote it by giving it five stars and a little comment on Apple Podcast or on your favorite podcast platform. And above all, subscribe to listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon, and until then, take care of yourself.